Welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the first video in IB Chemistry Topic 20, Organic Chemistry, where we will be looking at stereoisomerism, including conformational isomers and configurational isomers. In the second video of our IB Chemistry Topic 10 video series, we introduced isomers as species with the same molecular formula but a different displayed formula. However, even with the same displayed formula, isomers can exist due to the rotation of atoms in space. This is known as stereoisomerism and is formally defined as two species with the same structural formula but different arrangement of atoms in space. Broadly, all stereoisomers can be divided into two categories, conformational and configurational isomers. Let's get stuck in, starting with conformational isomerism. Conformational isomers are created by rotation of groups around a sigma, i.e. single, bond, without breaking and reforming bonds. They come in two forms in linear compounds, eclipse and anti, and two forms in cyclic compounds, chair and boat. Consider the linear example 1,2-dichloroethane. When drawing the 2D displayed formula, we could place the chlorine atoms on any of three positions on either carbon. If we visualise this in 3D, any movement between these positions would occur by rotation of all the groups attached to each carbon together. If we rotated the groups on both carbons so that the chlorine atoms aligned at the top, then looked at the molecule head on, the closest chlorine atom would obscure the further one, like an eclipse. Hence we call this an eclipse isomer. If we then rotated the further carbons groups by 180 degrees, then looked from head on, both chlorine atoms would be visible, antiverted. Hence, we call this an anti-isomer. Rather than using displayed or 3D formula to represent these isomers, we use a simple system of circles and lines, representing the view from the head-on position. First, draw the arrangement of atoms around the front carbon using three lines. Then, draw a circle within these three lines, with three shorter lines extending from its outside to denote the groups around the further carbon. In an eclipse isomer, they would be in theory be perfectly aligned so we draw them offset slightly to visualise them, but in anti we simply draw them in the anti-verted position. For cyclic compounds, conformational isomers are not dependent on the groups surrounding the carbons, but instead the shape of the carbon ring itself. Consider cyclohexane. When visualised in 3D, the carbon atoms forming the ring can be bent in multiple directions. If we arrange the atoms like so, it looks like a chair, so we call it a chair isomer. However, arranging the atoms like so, it looks like a boat, so we call it a boat isomer. Like with eclipse and anti, we can represent these two isomers using simplified diagrams which look like this. With conformational isomerism covered, we can now move on to configurational isomers, a far more frequently examined section of the syllabus. Configurational isomers can only interconvert by breaking and reforming covalent bonds i.e. not by rotation around a sigma bond. They occur within alkenes, where the pi component prevents rotation, and in substituted cycloalkanes, where the ring component prevents this. Configurational isomers can be divided into two groups, cis-trans and optical isomers. Cis-trans isomers occur due to the presence of two different atoms or groups on two adjacent carbon atoms. Let's consider the example of butuene with the displayed formula shown. If we draw this to focus on the double bond, we can see that each carbon either side of the double bond has two different groups attached, a CH3 and H group. Like with eclipse and anti-isomers, we could draw the two groups on either carbon in each of the two positions. Let's leave both CH3 groups on the top edge. When comparing the two carbons to one another, if the same two groups are on the same edge of the double bond, as seen here, we call this a cis isomer, and it would be named cis butuene. Placing both CH3 groups on the bottom edge is the same. However, if we moved one of the CH3 groups to the opposite side, we call this a trans isomer, named trans butuene. Likewise, moving the other group is the same. It is worth noting that one could focus on the hydrogens rather than the CH3 as the group being moved. It makes no difference. However, cis-trans isomers are not limited to hydrocarbon groups. 
Let's consider 1 bromo 1 chloro prop 1 ene, which has the following displayed formula. If we redraw this to focus on the double bond, we once again have two different groups on two adjacent carbons, bromine and chlorine on the left, and hydrogen and CH3 on the right. However, when the two groups on the two carbon atoms are not the same, it becomes difficult to identify on which side things lie. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.